Psychology and neuroscience go together like peas and carrots. Let's explore how these closely related disciplines ask questions. Let's first consider some definitions. What is psychology? Take a minute to think about that. Maybe write it down. Let's see how your definition compares to mine. Psychology is the scientific study of thought, emotion, and behavior in humans as well as other animals. This is done in a variety of ways, but involves collecting data from living beings. What about neuroscience? What does that term mean? Neuroscience is the scientific study of the nervous system in humans and other animals. Some neuroscientists use neuroimaging to monitor changes in the brain, while others listen closely to neurons themselves. Because the brain and nervous system control behavior, psychology is closely linked to neuroscience. So both of these fields of study use a scientific approach to asking questions, which means that research questions are based on existing evidence to examine testable hypotheses under carefully controlled conditions. So I'll share with you one of my pet peeves. Some students who take this course really like studying behavior, but aren't that hot on biology, which is pretty heavy in the neuroscience sections of this course. Many times I've had a first year student in my office or my virtual office looking for advice on course selection for second year and beyond. My first question to these students is usually, what topics did you enjoy most in intro? A response that drives me bananas is this one. Well, I prefer the non-science stuff. At that point, I have to take several deep breaths because everything you learn in the intro is science stuff. It's just that some of it involves measuring behavior and other stuff involves recording from neurons or brains. When I dig a little deeper, what those students usually mean is that they don't like the biology-oriented content. I've had the reverse situation with students who are more geared towards neuroscience. They'll often tell me they like the science stuff rather than the behavior and emotion topics. Again, it's all science because of the way questions are asked. So with that in mind, take a minute to define science. Maybe even pause to write it down. There are many different definitions of science. This one from Wikipedia says that science is a systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge in the form of testable explanations and predictions about the universe. This is quite broad, especially with the emphasis on the universe, which makes it seem more directly relevant to physics than other scientific disciplines. This definition also doesn't give a good sense of how science is done. I prefer a simpler definition that includes a systematic, rule-based approach to ask testable questions by collecting data. Science is guided by theories which are themselves built upon existing knowledge, so objective, observable, and shareable evidence is the basis of science. If done carefully, findings should be reproducible by others who also follow systematic procedures. So why should we use the scientific approach to learn about the world? To quote astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. His point is that scientific findings are relevant to everyone. If you drop a ball, it will fall to the ground from the force of gravity. This is the case whether or not you understand the concept of gravity or don't care about it at all. Science is supposed to be accessible to all who are willing to learn. One of the reasons that science is closely tied to technological advances is they allow us to see the invisible. Electricity, blood pressure, and microorganisms can't be detected with their limited human sensory capabilities. Unlike human brains, properly maintained machines don't let their moods affect their performance, so measurements using special techniques and equipment enhance reliability of scientific findings. So what is pseudoscience? Astrology, which links astrological events to human events and personality traits, as well as graphology, analysis of handwriting to predict personality traits, are well-known examples of pseudoscience. Although both practices are based on objectively measurable characteristics, such as star position and handwriting attributes, there isn't enough rigorous data to support that these measurable characteristics predict or explain what they're supposed to. That's what makes these two different practices pseudoscience rather than science. What they share are beliefs or claims that are on the surface based in science, but they are not. 
This makes pseudoscience powerful because of the value society places on science, but also dangerous because claims are unsupported or just plain wrong.